Coach, just uh, what was your overall assessment of the offensive line? Crazy game on Saturday. Yeah, I, I've uh, been doing this 30 plus years. I've never, have never seen or had that many penalties in a game. So it was uh, obviously it, it was uh, cost us the chance to really get that game going in a great direction early and kind of setting the tone and and you know when you get in those games and you you waste opportunities for explosives. I think three. I know for sure in three of the penalties we had two touchdowns and explosives. So that's 21 points. You know, you think you put those points on the board in the first half, it's a whole different story. So, yeah, it was obviously disappointing. What was your message to uh, Wilkin after that difficult game? You know, it's, it's, it's to all of them, though. It wasn't just him. But, you know, first of all, a lot of times when you have holding penalties, it's either A, you're out of position, or B, you don't have great technique or body position, and then you reach out and grab. And the thing that was unfortunate, two or three of those holds were just guys not necessarily – trusting their technique and their tracks and trying to do more than they're supposed to and that cost us so you know it's 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 still about the fundamentals of techniques and you know we had a a, a, a great film session on sunday and we're going to get that fixed what did you see out of elijah when he uh, got inserted in, into the game you know he did a great job you know and it was a small sample size and you know he was kind of beat up throughout the week so you know for me it's like wanted to pull the trigger earlier but you know just being in and out all week and not being 100 percent sometimes leaves a little doubt in my mind but i thought when he did go out there he did a tremendous job and what have you seen from him and proctor just in terms of what they, how they look in practice this week you know it's it's like every week we're, we're battling to get healthy to get better the want to is there is no question so you know hopefully at some point we'll have five healthy guys that can play together and we'll get a rhythm going but you know uh, again the I also say this, uh, as frustrating as it was for everybody at home and, and even more so for us, you know, the kids could have just imploded and you see it all the time, right? With that momentum just kind of go against you and, and you fall apart, but I'll give them credit for finding a way to stick together, fight through it and finally doing what they're capable of doing in the fourth quarter. How difficult is it to balance, I guess, gelling as a unit when you got Elijah maybe playing on the left, maybe playing on the right, you got Booker maybe playing at left tackle, just how do you guys kind of create that, that gel that you need to have? Well, it's, you know, you, you try to cross train guys throughout the summer and fall camp so they're able to play those positions. It, it's obvious when you when you look at teams that have a lot of success, it, it's amazing how many reps the starters play together, right? So that's that's not like a surprise to anyone. It's obviously better when you can have five guys or maybe you're rotating two guys, it's always the same rhythm playing together. But it's no excuses. Like that's why we practice, that's what we gotta get done no matter who's out there. How have you seen the the group bounce back this week in practice? I think they got the message, and uh, I think that, you know, it hurts them more than anybody else. They got great pride in what they do, and they want to do the right thing, and they want to do the job. None of the, none of those issues in the game were because they didn't want to and because they were lazy. You know, they give great effort. It's just we have to get better technically and understand what we're doing. So I feel like we're, we've had a good week. How have you all prepared for uh, the difficult crowd noise in Wisconsin? Yeah, you know, it's it's – Obviously, when you play in the SEC, that's anytime you go on the road is the expectation. So, you know, it's just like everything else. We got plenty of noise out there, and and you know, you work through it, the communications, and all things we got to do, and be prepared when you get there. From an offensive perspective, how much disruption can Tim Keenan cause a you know an opposing offense, and just with his pass rushing? Yeah, you know, Tim's a very good player. It's not just a pass rush too; it's in the run game. He's he's a he's a, a physical guy that can really hold the gap and be explosive. You know, it's always. It's, it, there's when you're looking at D tackles and noses throughout football, there's not a lot of them that are great pass rushers. And when you can find one or two that can do both, it, it does put a lot of stress on you. For guys who are moving around positions on the line, is it more difficult to go from like guard to tackle or switch positions, or is it more difficult to switch sides? Oh, for sure, switching positions. You know, it, it's a uh, you know left to right, right to left. You should always be able to do that. We work on that all the time, so that shouldn't be a huge issue. But switching positions, that, that's a whole other playbook, right? So you still should know, you, have an, you know what the offense is, but there's different techniques involved, there's different calls involved, there's different things you react to. So definitely switching positions can be difficult. For Booker to go to left tackle, never playing that in a game, and do it in one week's preparation, even though he got reps at it over the spring, I thought was a, he did an amazing job. Can you speak more about Tyler Booker and just what he's brought to the offensive line? I mean, thank God he's here. You know, he's... he's uh, it starts with just kind of the human he is, and then the leadership, 
the drive. The thing about it is you don't always have guys in your room that are like that. And I always tell these guys success leaves clues. So you look at this guy, how he trains, how he works. Like there's no excuse for anybody in our room to not understand what it takes. So it's huge to have that. And just the versatility he has, he, he can play all five spots on the line and he creates great leadership. He will challenge them when they need to be challenged and he's usually on point and, and they respect him because they know who he is and what he's about. Does he remind you of any former player that you've had or is he a unique case? There, there's only been a couple in all my years that have probably been as good a player and as good a leader as he is. You know, you have, I've had some really good players, a little more quiet, and you've had some guys that maybe weren't quite as good a players in, but were really good leaders. He's kind of the whole package. I hope he doesn't read this because I still got to coach him for the rest of the season, but, you know, and I still stay on him. And that's the thing about him, he wants you to challenge him. So he, he's, a, he's just a special kid. In your experience, him kicking out to left tackle, like how impressive was that? It's really impressive. There's there's not a lot of guards or interior guys that can do that, right? And then to do it in a short week and be ready to go and still be able to play guard and you know, it's just it's it's impressive that he did a great job, man. It was a it was huge to have that. You know, we were pretty thin and so for him to be able to step up and do it, it was it was big for us. And coach, speaking on your unit, the offensive line as a whole, how do you just challenge them? How do they challenge themselves just to uh win the battle of the trenches this week. You know, that's going to be important going on the road with that noise and everything. And win the trenches, that's just in, that you just have to do that to win games, period. So how does your group do that? Well, there's no question. You know, it always starts up front. And then when you're in a hostile territory, when you can dominate up front, then that kind of quiets everybody down. And, you know, it, it's not like they, they're going to work harder or something this week. It's the standard we have, right? And so I, I've never had major issues with, with their work ethic and want to. You know, we have some young guys that haven't played many reps and just understanding how to, just the technique it takes to be successful all the time and being able to handle different situations. So every rep these kids get, they get better, you know, and they understand it. So that nobody felt like I told these guys earlier worse than, than the guys that were involved with those issues this week and, and they came ready to work this week. What, what about your time at Michigan State? Have you imparted on the guys about maybe going to Camp Randall Stadium? You know, it's crazy my whole time there, I never went there. Oh. You know, I played them at our place. You know, because we were in the East and you, you only played one or two West teams a year. So I never got a chance to go there. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it as well. I heard it's a, it's a tremendous place to play. And, you know, there's there's great places and atmospheres and other schools and some of the Big Ten schools and even the ACC schools. And, you know, the Pac-12, you go up to Oregon and Washington. Those are all hostile territories. So I've been through a lot of them, but I'm, this will be a new one for me. And, and I know the guys are... You know, they understand the task at hand, but I think they're looking forward to trying to go out there and, and on the road and have our first challenge. What was your message to Parker after uh, the snapping issue, uh, the, the, the fumble snap? Well, you know, um, I'm not putting that all on Parker, that's for sure. You know, there were some, there were some uh, communication issues, kind of got rushed, so we'll share the blame. And obviously it, it's catastrophic to have us fumble snap anytime, but down there, obviously that's, that's <laughs> no, I, I don't need to say anything, right? Everybody understands what that means. So, and, and we work it every day, and we'll continue to work it every day. And again, it, it's, it's making sure everybody's on the same page and doing the right thing. Last question. When you watch the film, just what's the biggest takeaway from this past game that you can see the guys come back? Well, you know, obviously, the the penalties were called are an issue, and so why did those happen? Other than me just yelling at them, that doesn't help. How do we fix it, right? Was it because you didn't use the right technique? Was it because you weren't on the right track? Was it because you were playing high and out of position and you lost a guy? All the things that come with that, you know, that's what it was about. Just continuing to fix it. What, what happens is, is you continue to tell these guys that there's mistakes on a practice field, you know, it's not magnified till it happens in a game in front of the, the national audience, everybody in the world to see, right? So we gotta get to where we understand how we gotta fix things now and not wait till it happens and it costs us. And so that was a pretty good slap in the face for us right there to get it going. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Coach.